Hello and welcome to another of a series of videos about the features of Photofile, a photo management tool for the Apple iPad. This video is going to cover the main details of synchronizing with Adobe Lightroom. If you're an Adobe Lightroom user, you may already have come across the Publish Services feature. This works basically the same as a collection, but it also allows you to export those selected photos to web services. And this is how the integration with Photofile works. As you can see, I've already got a few set up here, but what I'm going to do is set up another one from scratch. So, first thing we need to do then is actually get the Lightroom plugin. So, obviously, I already have it installed on here, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. What you do is go to the Info tab in here, and you can see across the top of the page there, it says to install the Lightroom plugin, download it to your PC or Mac from, and it gives you an address. This address will be different for everyone because it's downloading it directly from your iPad. It's not downloading it from the web. So you would type that into a browser, which, as I said, I'm not going to do just now, and that downloads a zip file. If we come back into Lightroom, you would install that by going to the File menu, then Plugin Manager, and then Add. And what this allows you to do is pick the LR plugin. That one's actually a development one. Let's go here and pick the correct one, which is that one. And then if I select that, then it will add it, except in this case it's already added. Once it's here, it should be enabled and there is nothing else you need to do. So we say done. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is create a publish service. This is the bit that tells Lightroom which photos you want synchronized between Lightroom and Photofile. So I'm going to click on the plus and you can see I already have a whole load of different settings here. But I'm going to choose the first one which is what you would have anyway, which is go to Publishing Manager. In here, down the left, you can see all the services that are defined. And I'm just going to click Add, and then pick the iThing Publisher. Give it a name, New Service, and Create. Right, so we have the description. And it's already come up there with the iPad mini, that's the one that I've got running just now. Now for this to work, Photofile must be running and active on the iPad. If I try and do that without Photofile running, then nothing will appear there, and if you click scan, nothing will be found. This also needs to be running over Wi-Fi, so if you have Wi-Fi switched off, it won't be detected. Next setting down is Max Uploads. That says how many different photos can be sent over the airwaves at the one time. Usually it makes sense to have that set to one because it doesn't really get that much faster. But if you have a screamingly fast Wi-Fi connection, then by all means set that to a higher number. File naming doesn't really matter. File settings does matter. Uh, you can choose between JPEG or original because Photofile will process raw files and you would just set these as you like. Bear in mind, you're sending stuff for preview to an iPad, so yes, you can, if you choose, send full size, you know, 5,000 by 4,000 raw files, but you're really sending it to a phone with a large screen, so it's gonna take it some time to send those, and it's gonna take it some time to process those for display, so really in the file settings and image sizing, you want to scale things so that they're appropriate. So I'm going to set that to high quality JPEGs and in this case I'm not going to resize it. And we save. So these are the services I already had. This is the new one. If you'd just set up this service, this is the only one you've had, and you can see that it's already created a collection there called Untitled, and all I'm going to do now is pick some photos to go in there. So let's come down to, uh, let's say you, let's add some photos of buildings. 
This is all perfectly normal Lightroom functionality. Select all and drag into there. So we come into there and at the top of the screen there you can see new photos to publish. It knows that those are not yet on the iPad. And all you need to do now is hit publish. So this is now going off. It'll process these photos, convert them to JPEG, resize them, watermark them, whatever else you have set. And they're now downloading onto the iPad. So I'm just going to switch across there. This is the info page. So at the bottom there you can see that it is receiving a file. It's coming across Wi-Fi, which in this case is fairly slow just because of the Wi-Fi setup that I've got. And then as they appear, they will come into the grid. This is the collection that's receiving photos. So there's the first one. I'm just going to speed this sequence up a bit because, as I say, I have fairly slow Wi-Fi in the house and it will take some time to bring these down. Okay, they are beginning to show up now. This is taking longer than it would for most people simply because of two things. First of all, the Wi-Fi that I'm running it off at the moment is a fairly old router, so it's slow Wi-Fi to start off with. And secondly, I'm actually recording the video over Wi-Fi as well, and that takes most of the connection's capability. So what I'm doing there to refresh these as they come in is just tapping the collection again. The reason it doesn't update the grid display automatically is that you may well be working with other photos in the grid at the time. If you're trying to go through and star rate these as they appear, it would be kind of annoying if it continually refreshed the grid as you were trying to work with it. While that's downloading, I'll go through some of the other capabilities back in the Lightroom end. So I mentioned earlier that I had several other services set up here. Some of them are for other devices. That one's for an old iPad 1. These two, though, are both for the iPad mini. So you might be wondering why bother set up several devices. You can add as many different published collections as you like, and you can have published smart collections as well. So what's the point of setting up several different services? Well, the point is that each service has to have the same settings. So this service here, if I edit the settings on there, you can see that that one is set to use JPEG, reasonably good quality and no resizing. So that's fine for full-size previews. This one though is set to image format original and what this means is that if it's a raw file it sends a raw file, if it's a DNG it sends a DNG. Obviously there's no resizing or anything because it's sending the original untouched file. So by setting up multiple services like this and having different collections inside them, you can control exactly how things are sent down to the iPad. You may want, for example, one collection which shows your 100 most recent photos and you could do that using a smart collection. They go down at full size so you can look at them pixel for pixel. Older things where you just want to show them to people you might have sent down at iPad screen size. Okay, we're back and they're fully synchronized. So just scrolling around in here, yes, you can see from the left it has 31 photos there. I'll just pull that back to show the 31st. And you can see that just like Lightroom, it has some of them shown with a green label. If I pull the info panel out on the right and pick one at random, we have latitude and longitude there and you can see that it's got flags, ratings, captions and comments, although that particular one doesn't, that one does, there we go. So captions there, date and time is there, file type, megapixels, everything that you would expect to find right now with the exception of keywords, but they are coming. If I flick back into Lightroom now, then you can see the same photos. We have the green colouring, we have GPS coordinates, we have captions on the majority. So 
why sync them down to the iPad at all? Chances are you just want to show them to people, in which case that's fine, they're all there now. If I change one of these in Lightroom, let's just say I give it three stars, you can see that Lightroom immediately says that that has to be republished. So, I'm going to publish that. So, let's just flip back to the iPad, and that's the one that we just synchronized down. You can see it now has three stars. So let's do it the other way around. Let's change it back to one star. So you can see on the bottom right there that it's showing the red dot. That's saying that it's changed and needs synchronized. If I just pull out the panel on the left, you can see that it, there is a one in a red circle above that published collection, which shows that it has one photo which needs synchronized. In here, I'm going to do what else? Let's make it red and let's make it accepted and let's add a caption of test caption uh, yes thank you and done so in the detail panel on the right everything that's changed is shown with a red heading so you can see exactly what it is that needs to come back up in the other direction so I'm gonna come back into Lightroom now now, I've got a choice of doing two things. I could mark this photo for resync, in which case the publish button would light up and it would synchronize the data back. The other thing I can do is scroll down on the right there and where it says comments, there's this little refresh comments icon. If I click that, then it will go and get all the changes from the iPad and apply them to all the photos in here. And you can see that that one there has changed. It's one star, it's red, and we have test caption. If I change that, it goes back to publish. We can publish. So force it to reselect that and you can see that the caption has now gone. So that covers the basics. What else can we do? We can rename these of course. Rename me. And provided it's connected at the time, then that passes down to here. Back into Lightroom, we can remove. Okay, the option's just fallen out there outside the recording window, but I'm gonna say remove from collection, and that says deleted photos to remove. If I publish that back on here, you can see that that's gone. So all of the normal publish service functions, renaming, deleting, adding, synchronizing data, all that kind of stuff works quite happily between Lightroom and Photofile. And this is really the key part of using Photofile as a remote workstation for Lightroom. Any of these metadata changes, the stars, captions, anything on this right hand panel can be interchanged between here and Lightroom. Thanks very much for watching.